Hello, and welcome to the Gilbo Girls Show, where you will have the opportunity to hear from mothers, fathers, siblings, and individuals themselves about their journey of living with a disability. I know, I know, it's called Gilbo Girls, but we have a bonus for you as we get the Gilbo boys to interview some of the dads and siblings and get their perspectives too. We'll also have special guests from time to time to share the many resources that are available to those living with a disability and their families. So get ready to laugh, smile, cry, maybe even get a little angry when you hear some of these stories of their day-to-day -day struggles. But let's not forget their many triumphs. As they say, it takes a village. And if it weren't for our village, we wouldn't be where we are today. So join us. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Gilbo Girls. Today, we have special guest Kelly Nelson. She is the Outreach and Communications Manager with Marilyn Abel. Marilyn Abel accounts are a new way to help individuals with disabilities save money and pay for qualified disability-related expenses without jeopardizing state or federal means-tested benefits such as SSI or Medicaid. So first of all, thank you for uh, being on the show today. It's so important to spread awareness about the different resources out there, you know, in the disability um, community. And for the listeners out there, I was going to interview her on the Marilyn Abel and I'm revamping right now and putting her on the spot. I want to interview her first about, about her children and her, and her daughter and her life experiences. Um, so let's dive in. Tell me a little bit about your family, how many children you have, how old they are, um, what type of disability they have. Um, just kind of give us a, a, a little uh, insight. Great. Well, thank you, Karen, so much for having me on tonight. This is going to, you know, I, I love when we switch it up a little bit and I get surprised. Um, so I'd love to share with you a little bit about my family. I am um, a mom of three kids. I have a 26-year-old son, a 22-year-old son, and an 18-year-old daughter. Mm -hmm. And my youngest, my daughter, Lily, is the uh, one that was born with a disability. She was actually born um, at 26 weeks in the car on Route 95, driving down 95 at 145 miles an hour. Oh, Rio. my Lord. Yes. Yeah, so she wow. was born in the back seat of my car, um, extremely premature. And um, she was oxygen deprived for 10 minutes. They actually didn't really know. I didn't even think she was alive when we got back to the hospital where I had come from. They sent me home. So they were very surprised to see me in the, in the parking lot with a baby in my pants. But, you know, um, so Lily's journey was it, it began there. And it's just been one of these extraordinary journeys where, um, you know, they were told me they told me not to expect much that um, she probably was never going to do anything because of the severe oxygen deprivation. And thanks to so much intervention and help from early intervention, infants and toddlers, special educators along the way, physical therapy, OT, speech, everything. I mean, you know, she had, she had the whole thing. And um, I'm so grateful to say that um, they were wrong about her future. Lily is walking and talking and feeding herself and doing all kinds of things. She's actually bossing me around all the time now. <laughs> <laughs> well, how long was she in the NICU for and, and what, um, what disabilities did they, did occur from the prematurity? Yeah. So she was, um, in the, uh, NICU for 101 days intubated for much of that time. So a lot of her disabilities in, in the beginning were respiratory related um, she also had eye surgery because her retinas were going to be detached. And, um, you know, without having that oxygen to your brain, it really does um, take some time to see where it impacts. Mm -hmm. So, you know, here we are 18 years later, and we see that it has um, definitely impacted her fine motor, gross motor, um, her ability to some neurological deficits as well. And she has an intellectual disability, intellectual disability. So, um, you know, she's just had to work really, really hard 
along the way just to learn things that came really natural to all of us. Like, for example, I know this sounds just like a silly example, but all of us, as we're talking and breathing, our body just knows to swallow that saliva that's in our mouth. Well, that part of her brain is one of the parts that has been impacted. So she has to literally think about it all the time I and sometimes be reminded. Autonomic so, system. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So little things like that. And, um, you know, so that's a little bit about some of her deficits, but I guess what I love to focus on the most is just these amazing uh, strengths mm -hmm. that she has and just so um, tenacious, I guess I would say, you know, for a, a little one that they really, they, from day to day, we didn't, I didn't want to leave the NICU except for when they did ship change because they couldn't tell me that she was going to be there the next day. You know, it was really a, it was a really uh, tumultuous time, you know, so to so, you know, and not knowing what she would be able to do, but just to see how incredibly hard she has worked along along her lifetime and to do the things that she's doing. And she just doesn't even want to hear that she can't do something. She just keeps trying. So, um, you know, but she still is <clears throat> limited in her ability with some of the academic things. So she has decided, or we have decided as a family that she would be not pursuing that diploma track, that she would be on a certificate track, which is going to give her a little more time um, in the school system and have the opportunity to learn some of those critical life skills things that I think are so important. But um, she's, you know, she has dreams and plans for the future. And if I know anything about her, she is, she's going to just keep working away at it. I mean, one day she wants to have a job. One day she said she wants to live on her own. She wants to get married one day. I mean, she has all kinds of dreams and is she going to need support along the way? Yes, she is. She is, but I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. About the, um, her siblings, how, you know, how was it on them growing up? Because we always tend to leave the siblings out of it, you know? Um, so we always like to mention the siblings. There needs to be more sibling groups, um, just across the board too. Um, how, how was that kind of managing and juggling everything, you know, having a child that, that has those extra needs? Yeah, that, that was definitely tough. I mean, at the time they were, her brothers were four and eight years old and I was very involved in their life and working you know, full time at, at that time. And, um, they went from seeing me all the time and um, looking forward to having a new little little baby sister coming along to be to being told that, um, you know, mom had the baby early and I'm in the hospital all the time. I'm in there for months. And fortunately, I had my mom living with us at the time who stepped in and helped with the, the things around the house and getting them to school and homework and all that good stuff. But it was it was just hard for them. And it was actually hard for us as parents. Should we introduce these brothers to their little sister. She doesn't look like that little pink baby that we read the baby books about. She looks downright scary. She's, you know, got transparent skin and she looks like a baby bird that fell yes. from a nest and yes. everything all over her face. And you can't even see her face. Yes. And um, so, you know, that was scary and making that decision. But I, I love to tell the story of uh, the first time that we decided to introduce uh, her brothers to her and um, uh, going into the NICU, they said, um, listen, you, she's so volatile right now. No noise, no talking, no touching, no nothing, you know, please, 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 please. Okay. So, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so scared what they're going to think of her. And there's bells and whistles going off everywhere. And it's a scary looking environment. And, you know, the kids come up to this, you know, the, um, I still have an incubator and all they can do is look through these little portals, you know, and my oldest son looks through the little window and he says, mom, is that, is that our baby? Aww. And my heart was just breaking because she was so scary. And I said, mm -hmm. I said, yes, honey, that's our baby. And he said, mom, she's so beautiful. Oh my gosh. And what everyone else was terrified to look at because we had all this knowledge in our head of, you know, her, you know, turning blue all the time and oh, trying right. to die on us every day. You know, we, they, 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 they
Right. They, they did not. Oh, and she was, I mean, she didn't be on those Brady's. They were resuscitating her plenty of times. So she was really having some trouble there. So as looking through the perspective of a child, all he saw was this little baby that he loved. And he saw everything beautiful about her. And what a lesson that was as a parent, right? Okay. Just to be able to be in that moment. And, and how, um, old, how old were your other kids when she was born? Um, four and eight. Okay. So my eight-year-old was just, is the person that, that said that at the time. And it just, you know, it really taught me a lesson right in that moment. And that is he saw the beauty in the moment and he saw what was great about her and not all the fear that I did. Yeah, absolutely. I completely oh. agree. Wow. Um, I know we're going to, we're going to kind of talk about, um, you know, your jobs because your role before, um, you start working for Marilyn Abel, which I think is always so important for parents to know, you know, that there are supports through the school as well, um, as outside supports, but can you tell us, um, and forgive me if I'm wrong, because I know Cecil County and Harford County are like, they named, I know it was one's partners for success and one's like another name, very similar. Um, so, and actually to step forward before that, um, what kind of led you into the jobs that you were in and kind of just let us know what different supports those um, organizations had for, for people. Yeah. So it's uh, interesting because very early on in my working career, I had an opportunity to work at Kennedy Krieger. And this is before I had any kids and I knew nothing about the world of disabilities. And fast forward 30 some years later, I have an, an all new appreciation of, of the types of services and supports and resources that are available to people with disabilities, because at first I was in that role of helping them um, to connect with those resources. And then here I am on the other side as someone who has benefited greatly from learning about what's available in our community. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Is there any, is there one thing um, or any advice you would want to give families out there um, that are new, that are just finding out maybe that their child has a disability and welcome to this world <laughs> yes. um, of, of love, lovely craziness. I don't even know what to call it. This roller coaster ride that is a beautiful roller coaster ride with the ups and downs. Um, but is there any, any piece of advice you would give them? Yeah, actually, I would. I, at one point in my um, in my career, I had the the good fortune of being the family support coordinator for the early intervention or infants and toddlers program in Harford County, and I had I was asked this question all the time, and I always say I want to give you three pieces of advice. Number one, get connected. Number two, get connected, and number three, get connected. And by that I mean as a new parent coming into this, educate yourself with all the information that you can possibly take in at a time. Forgive yourself for what you forget and will have to relearn. Forgive yourself for the pile of material that you've collected that you haven't read yet, but you're gonna, right? And connect with other parents who are two steps ahead of you that have been down this road and can help you up to that next level. And then again, connect again by when you've taken your, some steps in your journey, turn around and mentor that, that parent that's a couple steps behind you because the parent connection network is the most fantastic uh, resources we have. You know, we've learned from each other. We'll never live long enough to make all the mistakes ourselves. Let's learn from each other. <laughs> oh, I love it. And this is one of the, this was like one, really one of the mission and, and my passion behind even starting this was, you know, I, I looked out there, I'm like, I don't see any other podcasts or like any other YouTube shows or just something that that's really giving back. Yeah. You know, everybody has a story to tell and everybody has different resources. And there's so many States and, and people, you know, that, that are different resources are available and you never know how far and how, how, you know, why the reach is going to go, but you know, that was my main thing. You know, I would not be here if it wasn't for the ones that came before me. So now it's time to pay it forward. Um, another reason why I love living, living, love working, you know, for the arc, um, because you know, it's, it's just sharing and helping and learning. And so I just, yeah, I love that. That is great, great advice. Um, and I just recently did a podcast too, with, um, a woman in Utah, that she started up a program, um, a, a nonprofit called the buddy, just like me. 
And the whole scope of it is because, you know, with, and she's in with hospitals and stuff. And the, the, the whole thing is you want to connect with other families and, and you can't through like Kennedy Krieger, Johns Hopkins, or even, you know, physical therapy places because of HIPAA. So what they can do is they give the family this information. They log on to this app and the website, they put the information in and it will pair the individual with a buddy just like them. Yeah. Um, it, they have, uh, what if, if someone has a disability and they want to mentor another child, you know, child with a disability, it connects caregivers. So it, and she said that the craziest thing was when she first started it, her son, there was another boy with CP that lived, what'd she say? Three, I think she said three miles, maybe five miles. I'd uh. have to go back and look, but between within three to five miles from them, I think it was five miles for the past three years. They didn't even know about, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's all about those connections. And again, because you're learning. So, um, this nonprofit I think is huge and, you know, she's starting off. So, um, yeah, it, it's just, it's just awesome. It is awesome. It, it really is. Okay. So let's dive in. I think we're good on time. Um, so we'll just dive into the Marin Able accounts. Okay. And this is something new for my daughter, um, Faith, who just turned 18 also. Um, and I thought that this was very important. And I do want to say that there are other people that will be listening and watching that aren't from Maryland. They need to check with their state to see, because I'm not sure which states have it, but I know that there are a lot of other states that have these ABLE accounts. Um, so can you tell us a little bit more about what the Maryland ABLE account is and the benefits of opening one? Sure, sure. So you did a great job in, in your introduction talking about ABLE accounts. And basically they are a way or a tool for people with disabilities and their families to finally be able to save money, pay for qualified disability expenses and plan for their future without jeopardizing those critical benefits like SSI and Medicaid and things like that. And the reason I say finally is because, you know, people with disabilities over the last decades have had a real challenge. If they're receiving SSI cash benefit, there's a $2,000 asset limit that Social Security says you cannot go beyond that level of assets or, or savings, or you're going to jeopardize these benefits. Well, how in the name of the world are you going to plan and prepare for the future? Have any meaningful dialogue and discussion about, hey, you know, Faith, Lily, what, you know, what would you girls like to see in your future? Would, would you, where would you like to live one day? What would you like to do with what, what kind of money, where are you going to get that from? Certainly nothing can be done with two, less than $2,000. So the great thing is with the ABLE legislation that was passed in 2014, it makes it possible for people with disabilities to be able to save up to a hundred thousand dollars in an ABLE account without jeopardizing those benefits, right? What a, that's a game changer. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And what, um, so who would be eligible to, um, to qualify to open up an ABLE account? So right now, um, the criteria is two things. First, the person has to have had the onset of their disability before their 26th birthday. And the second is that they have to have a disability that meets the Social Security Administration's definition of a disability. So that's the two criteria right now. But as soon as I say that, I think right away, there's these myths and misconceptions. People hear that age 26 and they think, okay, so I gotta wait until I'm 26 to open the account or, or you know, I have to do it before I'm 26. No, you can have an ABLE account at any time. We have a account holders that are a couple months old. We have people that are opening accounts in their 70s. So it doesn't matter. You just have to have the onset of that disability before 26. Okay. And um, you don't have to be receiving SSI or SSDI because when you look at a lot of children that have disabilities, that um, apply for SSI, they oftentimes don't get it because their social security is going to examine that whole family's income. They're looking at the household income and it disqualifies them. But when that person turns 18, they're looking at just that person's income. It's either much lower, like my daughter's 18, but she's still in school. She doesn't have a job. She has no means, right? So there's no income there. So oftentimes they, they, they um, are eligible for SSI then. So you don't even have to be receiving SSI or SSDI, just needing to have that disability that meets their definition. Okay. And can you tell us who owns the ABLE account? Um, 
and what an author authorized legal representative is and what their role would be. Yes. So it is always the person with the disability, no matter their age, that is the owner and beneficiary of an ABLE account. So if mom and dad have a child that's born with say Down syndrome, they open their ABLE account up right away. The account owner is still that infant who has the disability, right? Obviously, someone's going to have to help manage that account for children. That's where that authorized legal representative comes in. For children, anyone under the age of 18, it's usually a parent or, you know, family member or guardian that serves in that capacity. But um, once that ABLE account owner turns 18, these are financial accounts, you know, they have the opportunity as the owner to manage the account themselves if they are, are able to do so, if they want to do so. You know, we have um, many of our Maryland ABLE account holders that do manage their own account, but there's still lots of adults that due to the nature of their disability, they, they want help. They want help managing these accounts, doing the banking portion, understanding the decisions. So if that's the case, you, you can appoint an authorized legal representative. And that's usually done with a power of attorney. Uh, if you have a power of attorney drawn up, that's great. If not, our website has a form called the limited power of attorney over the ABLE account only. You just take it to the bank and have it um, you know, witnessed and uh, sign it in front of the presence of a notary. And that's all you need to do. Do. Yeah, because I have to just talking from personal experience in the beginning, I had to open it up and, and I'm my daughter's um, authorized representative. But um, as far as Social Security, we put my husband down as the representative. So God forbid if something happened and I wanted to get hired on at a later date to work for her, I could because I'm not her representative, which is another thing that people don't know about either. Um, so do I have to, I have, I should, or do I have to change and put him on as the representative for the ABLE account being he's the representative for social security or it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter. And I'm glad that you brought that up, Karen, because people here, rep payee and authorized legal representative, or as we call them, ALRs, they're not one in the same. They can be two totally different people. They're not connected at all because Social Security is a separate entity and ABLE accounts are a financial account. It's a bank account for your own personal funds or for your, you know, for the ABLE account owner's funds. Okay, good. Yeah. Cause those are, that's when like, I'm like in that learning curve now with all of this stuff. So I'm like, ah, um, all right. Awesome. The other thing. Okay. So what are the steps needed for a representative to be able to be added to that account? Um, is there a specific, did we just go over that? Yes. We just went over that. Is there a specific form to be completed? And if so, where does one find it? So yes, that is on their website under forms and it's the, and that's the AL, the ALR. Yep. But yep. if you're a parent and your child's under the age of 18, you don't need that form at all because you're their parent and minors aren't allowed to have a bank account of any type on their own. They always have to have a, someone else with them. With them. Okay. And then yeah. when they turn 18, is that when they have to do so, to decide yes. so it just stays that way? Yep. You want to, that's when they have an opportunity to, um, you know, manage the account on their own or appoint someone else if they want help. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, um, how much can one contribute to the account and tell us how and who else can contribute to that account as well? Okay, so the great thing about ABLE accounts is anybody can contribute to a person's ABLE account. Money can come from the account owner, him, him or herself. It could come family members, friends. It could come from earned income from a job stimulus payments, unemployment payments, rollovers from a 529 college savings plan, small inheritances, insurance settlements, any types of these fundings can go into an ABLE account. What you do wanna keep in mind is that there is an, a standard annual contribution limit for your ABLE account. And that amount this year is $16,000. So that's the maximum amount you can contribute to that account. Okay. From anybody, all the total amount in that contributions for that year cannot exceed 16. It resets the next calendar year. You can do another 16. And this number changes from some time, sometimes. I mean, last year it was 15,000. A couple of years before that, it was 
14,000, it's tied to that federal gift tax exclusion law. So when the IRS changes that, ours go up as well, which is good. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Um, and I apologize to the listeners because this is real life. Somebody's mowing outside. So if you hear a lawnmower <laughs> coming, going around in the background, that's what it is. Okay. Um, and I think that it is absolutely awesome that, um, when she said that anybody can contribute to the, to the account, they actually have a thing where you can set it up. So people, um, you can share it on Facebook and social media, almost like a, like a GoFundMe type of, um, type of thing. So I think that is, that is really awesome because then people know, okay, they're donating to a legit account. They can clearly see that these funds can only be spent, which we'll get to on what they can spend it on and what they can't spend it on, but it's going to go to that child. Yes. I love that you brought that up here. And it's one of my favorite features with a Maryland Able account. It's called the gifting page and you can activate it whenever you want. You know, we have over 4,500 Able account holders and I love sharing this, but 455 of those account holders have activated their gifting page and have been using it. And over the last four years together, these people have received over two and a half million dollars in gifts. So you're thinking, no way. And I'm, I'm saying, yes, this is a this is something that people want to support their family and their friends in their goals. You know, you want to move out to your own apartment. You need furniture. Send a link to your gifting page. You know, hey, grandma, aunt, aunt Wendy, aunt, you know, anybody, friends, would you like to help me get my furniture for my first apartment? Would you like to help me, you know, save up for this trip? I'm in Special Olympics and we're traveling to our regional event. You know, there's so many great ways to use that gifting page and it's so easy. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Can you explain what the able to work act is. Yes. Well, you know, of course, now that I've told you that there's this annual contribution limit of 16, I'm going to turn around and give you the exception to the rule, right? Because that's the way we do things. But for folks that have an able account who are also working, they can qualify for able to work contributions as long as they're not contributing to another retirement account somewhere or their employer isn't contributing to a retirement account like a 401k or 403b, things like that. If they're not contributing to another account, they can actually contribute in addition to their 16000 They can contribute up to $12,880 to their ABLE account. Okay, it's going to depend upon their salary. So if they're making an annual salary of $8,000, that's the extra amount they can contribute from able to work. Okay. Um, if they're making $15,000, they're still capped at that extra $12,880. So remember, anybody can make contributions towards that $16,000 bucket, if you will. Mm -hmm. And someone that's doing able to work, they can contribute above and beyond that up to $12,880. Wow. That's awesome. And are there Maryland able tax incentives? Yes, there are. And that's one of the things I wanted to share a little bit more about some of the benefits other than being able to save beyond that resource limit. And one of them is that, you know, first of all, the money that's in the able account, you do not pay federal or state taxes on those earnings, which is fantastic, right? Tax advantage savings and investing. Um, the other thing is anyone that contributes to a Maryland able account, and lives in Maryland, right? You are eligible to take an income deduction on your Maryland state taxes up to $2,500 per person. So, you know, if mom and dad are married and contributing and they're filing joint and they're contributing to their child's ABLE account, they can take a $5,000 income deduction off their Maryland state taxes. And I think this is one of the best things because it's like something that, you know, my husband and I wanted to begin this planning and saving process for Lily's future. And it's provided us with this incentive to, to start that. You know, we start, out, we start out really small, like $10 a month, and we've worked our way up. And we haven't hit that $5,000, you know, annual contribution yet, but we're working towards it. But we get an income deduction for, you know, saving for our daughter. And then we get th the other great part is we get to use the money that's in her ABLE account to pay for things we were going to buy for her anyway. That's all. That's really awesome. 
Yeah, that is great. You know, I'm going to stop this later and I'm like going to go over. I'm like, all right, Jesse, come listen to this. I'm like, listen to that. <laughs> and then also too, which I'll tell people at the end again too, but what I'm going to do is um, Kelly has a really awesome PowerPoint too. So I'm going to somehow share that. I think there's, if I, I think there's a link that I found that I can put in there that goes to the PowerPoint to like pretty much everything that we're talking about, which is awesome. Um, because this is a lot to remember and a lot to know, and it's great, great, great information. Awesome. Okay. Now that I cut you off. <laughs> no, I just get excited about that because it was like, that's when the light bulb went off in my head. I said, when I first opened the able account, I'm like, I'm going to open it. Cause I want to get her ready for when she does turn 18, there'll be no assets in her name. It won't mess up her, you know, getting social security, but we don't have any extra money. We've got so much money we spend on, you know, when we leave the house, she has to have someone with her, you know, so many things. And I thought, let's just start with $10 a month. We can commit to that. And then I thought, wait a minute, Kelly, let's think about this. You're paying for things to care for your daughter. Anyway, you may as well put the money in the ABLE account first, right? get the income deduction when it's in there, it's growing, but you know, any earnings or growth is tax-free and then you can use it to pay for like the things you were going to do anyway, summer camps, her braces, all this stuff. It's like, and I'm getting a tax deduction. So that was a no brainer after that. <laughs> yeah. You know, it didn't click with me and I didn't. Okay. That is like, wow, that is awesome. I wish I'd known this prior. So do me a favor, people share this to people and let them that don't know, because that's awesome. That is really awesome. Cause I could just think of all of the things right now off the top of my head with faith too. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. So what are some of the qualified disability expenses? All right. That's a great question. So people want to know, Hey, what do I, you know, how can I use this money? When can I use it? You can access the funds in your ABLE account whenever you want. It's an online bank account. So you can log into your account, take withdrawals for qualified disability expenses when you need them. Keep your receipts. <laughs> Keep your receipts. And that's a good point because these, this is a tax advantage savings account. And if you are ever audited by the IRS, they're going to want to know two things. Do you qualify to have this special account? You know, as long as you have that, um, you know, either disability certification form or prove that you have SSI or SSDI, you're good to go. The next thing they're going to want to know is how are you spending this money mm -hmm. and have receipts available. But here's what the IRS says in the code. You may use money from your ABLE account to, uh, for the benefit of the account owner for anything, anything, any service, any item that supports that person in their health or in their independence or their quality of life. That's a, that's a really broad definition. And some people hear it and they go, I love it. I came up, I've got all these great ideas. I know what I want to do with it. Other people go, oh my God, Kelly, that's the worst definition. I, do, I can't operate like this. I want a list of things that I can pay for. And I say, I just say, this is easy. Because listen, before you take that withdrawal or use money from your able account, ask yourself, does this, you know, do these these books that I'm about to buy, buy or school supplies, does it support my child in health independence or quality of life? Well, you can't be a student and do your schoolwork if you don't have supplies. So yes, in order for them to independently do their work, it qualifies. That's an example, right? Mm -hmm. But you want to think broad, you know, it's not just health like prescriptions and doctor copays, but health can be um, therapeutic horseback riding. It could be a membership to a gym. You really have to kind of think broader about it. Right. Massages. Massage yes. Yes, exactly. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, and even too, like vacations, because that's, that's, I'm so glad you asked that because if I do presentations multiple times a week and the number one question I get is, what about a vacation? Can you use ABLE funds to pay for a vacation? Let's use that criteria as our litmus test. Does it support that account owner in his or her health, independence, or quality of life? Karen, what would you say? Yeah, quality life because they're getting out and they're, they're learning different cultures and history and, and um, all kinds of things, right? Mental, mental, mental health, 
health and physical health. Everyone benefits from a vacation. Just because you have a disability doesn't mean that you don't need a vacation and a respite from your regular life. Right. So right. yeah, but here's the difference though. You cannot use ABLE funds to pay for the entire family's vacation. Right. So when my daughter's planning her dream trip to Disney, she's been saving for a long time now, um, all of her allowance money. But when we go, Lily will be able to use her ABLE funds to purchase her airfare. She could purchase her tickets to the park, not for mom and dad, not for her brothers, only for the benefit of Lily. That's awesome. Yeah. So here's a question. So say they have a respite provider or personal supports. They need that person to go with them Mm -hmm. or they can't be by themselves. Can that money be used to pay for their ticket? They they get paid like, you know, because when they clock in, when they're on the clock, they, you know, but I don't believe that it covers their, their airfare and stuff like that. Would, would the ABLE account if they wanted to? You can't, you cannot use ABLE funds to purchase the ticket for that person per se, but you could negotiate a total amount for the trip. Okay, You're going to be gone five days. And, um, this is the amount of money I'm going to, I'm, I am going to pay you for, for taking my child to this trip. Okay. To be there for their safety, for their health, their independence. Right. Mm -hmm. And that amount can include enough, you know, for them to be able to cover their own admission and whatever they they need to do in order to make that happen. But no, you can't purchase the extra tickets because they're going to say, whose tickets are these? And what is this about? So, yeah. Right. Okay. Um, let me see. Can you talk to us a little bit more about the savings and investment options? Yes, that is a great, um, a great thing. I want you guys to know that when you have an ABLE account, you have a choice as to where you keep your money. You could keep it in a cash savings, um, account, which is an FDIC insured account. Um, and you will be receiving whatever the federal interest rate is at that time. We don't determine the interest rate. It's, it's governed by the federal interest rate. So, you know, some people like the cash option. They're like, hey, listen, I want my money in my ABLE account so that when I go to get it, I want it there. I don't want to worry about it. I put it in the stock market and it's not there. I want my money. They're willing to trade off the, you know, the potential gains of the market, you know, being in investments for that stability of having the money there, mm-hmm. um, even though they may be earning less interest with that federal interest rate. And that's fine. It's, it's great. It's a personal choice. Others choose one of our four investment options. So for some folks, they say, you know, I'm planning on, I, I open an ABLE account for my child. She's three months old. We're not really planning on really accessing these funds very much right now. We're really looking for this as a a long-term saving and investment tool that her family is going to help us contribute to this account. We want an investment. We want something that has the potential to earn more over time, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got uh, mutual funds that are managed by Vanguard, and there's three different ones. There's a conservative, a moderate, and a, um, a, excuse me one second, Mm -hmm. I am being called away. This is life. Um, I I know we have a a hot pot on the stove that we cannot move. So, you know, go, go. Karen, I'm sorry. I'll be right back. Don't be sorry. You're fine. (laughs) Okay. Break. (laughs) Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much for being flexible. Yes, we got the hot pot off the stove. No one is burnt. So that's good. I just know, you know, I don't want to take up much time talking about all the different choices, but just know that you have a choice to, to pursue savings or investments. But the best part about it is every time you make a contribution to your ABLE account, you can choose multiple options. You can say, you know what, I'm going to put this deposit's gonna go into the cash savings. Next time we get some birthday gift money or holiday money, I'm gonna put that in one of the investments. Every time you make a contribution, you get to choose where it goes. I love that. So yeah. many options. How can one access the money in their ABLE account? So I know you can trans, like transfer it to your bank account, but do they have like a debit card or they have like, so what are the different ways? Okay, so the main way that's available to everyone with an ABLE account is that you transfer it to your 
to your linked account. So when you open the ABLE account online, it's gonna ask you to identify a bank account of your choice. It could be savings or checking, something that you're gonna to link to your ABLE account. That's how you're gonna get money into your ABLE account and how you'll take money out. So you can log in anytime. I wanna register for my kid for you know summer camp. I'm up at midnight, I'm on their website, register them. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna log in right now, get into my ABLE account, transfer that $200 out and put it back in my linked checking account. That way I can pay for it, right? Or we also have a prepaid card option, which is a very convenient way to access the funds in your account. So it's not a credit card, it's not a line of credit, but it's a, a card that you're gonna load funds from your ABLE account onto a card that looks like a regular Visa. Okay. And you can use it online or in the community. So let's go back to that example of, I'm, I'm, scheduled, I'm signing up Lily for her theater summer camp, right? And I'm online and instead of, when I register her putting my credit card number in there and reimbursing myself from the ABLE account, now I'm gonna put that ABLE prepaid cards okay. piece of number in there, right? And then it comes directly out of her ABLE account and it just saves me a step. So I'm all about the convenience with three kids, working full time, lots going on, right? I want the convenience. Yeah. I do need to let you know that that doesn't automatically come with the ABLE account. You have to opt into it. Okay. So there's an additional fee that the bank charges to have that card and it's a dollar and 25 cents a month. So I say to people, hey, look, if you're having an ABLE account and you're really very rarely accessing funds or maybe once every couple months you get in there and take a withdrawal, save yourself the $15 a year. Right. But if you're using this frequently like I am, dentist, copay, prescriptions, right? Yeah. Um, everything she needs, I'm paying for it with that prepaid card and it just makes it so much more convenient to access the funds. Absolutely. Um, what are there account fees? Are there any account? Fees? Yes. Thank you. That's, that's important to know. So, you know, we are facilitated by the state of Maryland. Um, we are actually part of Maryland 529. That's the college savings plan people. So they're section 529 in that internal revenue code. And we're section 529A for ABLE. So we're together and, um, we actually, um, as a state, we don't, we're not a bank. We needed to partner with a financial institution. So uh, they do all the banking. The, the Bank of New York Mellon is our program manager that handles making the deposits, taking the withdrawals. You wanted to put that deposit into that mutual fund with, um, with um, you know, Vanguard, they send the money there. That's what the banking part does. So there is a fee for this because you know what? Banks, they don't want to work for free. I know you're surprised, right? Mm -hmm. But there is a fee for that. And um, that is $35 annual maintenance fee. So every year, um, that's going to come out of your account four times a year at $8.75. So anyone that opened an ABLE account, say like yesterday, they're not going to pay $35 because it's prorated. They didn't have the account, you know, January, I mean, yeah, January through May. Mm -hmm. So um, they only are going to have that uh, last two quarters, right, uh, withdrawn from their account. Okay, cool. All right. Can you tell us about the different features that the Maryland ABLE offers? Oh, we already covered that. We already covered we that. Did. We talked about the online gifting page, which I love. Yeah. It's so easy, right? And that's that comes with every ABLE account. You can choose to activate it if you want. The prepaid card is another option. And we talked about that a little bit while how it's really convenient. Mm -hmm. um, also, can I mention one more thing about the prepaid card? I love it as a financial literacy tool. If you're a family, if, you, if you're a parent that's listening to this and you're thinking, oh my gosh, like that's a challenge for me, how to teach my child with, um, you know, with a disability or really any, any kids have to learn about finances, right? It's just right. abstract. But what I love about that prepaid card is it's such a great way to, to teach saving, spending, right? The first lesson, when my daughter got her card, she opened it up and she was so excited because now she's got a card like everybody else, right? That's how mom and dad pay for things or brothers. Yeah. Well, she said, mom, I need my phone. Give me my phone. I want to take a picture of my of my new credit card and I want to send it to all my friends. Well, you know, we laugh about that, but 
How would she know that she shouldn't do that? There's no reason that she would know. That was lesson number one with that card. And we talked about it. You know, we don't share our card. It's got your money on this card. And we, great lesson that came in that. But more importantly, um, because she has this prepaid card and she has a set amount on it, she has to monitor how much money is in there. So when she wants to go to the bouncy house, right, with her friend at the end of the month, like they planned, will you have enough money left on this card? Hmm. Also seeing that things like, her cell phone bill are being paid with that card, things that she didn't even know existed as a life expense. So it's a great way to just sort of begin to introduce living expenses, saving and budgeting for a special treat. It's kind of cool. That is an awesome tool. Um, and then do you know any of these states or how many states have the ABLE account offhand or no? Yeah, there's 48 ABLE programs across the country, so 47 states in the District of Columbia. And there's a really great website. Um, it's, uh, it's called ABLE Today, and it's um, run by the National Association of State Treasurers, and they have links to every single program out there. Wow. And then, you know, because people say to me, like, well, you know, we're in the military. We're only here for a little while. We're moving to another state. What happens to my ABLE account? Well, you can take it with you if you want. Keep it with Maryland. It can travel with you because it's linked to, to your checking account or, you know, whatever bank account. Or you can roll it over to that state, provided they have an ABLE program. So you want to check with that state because sometimes there's benefits of being within your own state, like our tax incentives for the right. Maryland taxes, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, where does one go to enroll an account and is there an option to do it in person or is it only online? Uh, there is only, um, you know, we, we don't have, um, appointments to sit down with people and open the account because again, these are, this is confidential information that you're entering, right? So, I can answer lots of questions about it, but when it comes time to it, I, I'm not going to want to be privy to your social security number and your bank account number and things like that. So you're going to want to do that online directly from our website at www.marylandable.org. There'll be a little button in the upper right-hand corner that says open an account now. Um, before you do that, though, check out the website. It's got our program disclosure book, which will tell you everything that you could possibly ever want to know about the ABLE account, all the fees, all the investments, everything. And then, you know, then you can proceed to opening the account. Um, there's frequently asked questions if you want to look at that. But when you're ready to roll, here's what I'd recommend. Get some stuff together. So you have it all right there. Um, you click op open an account. It's going to lead you through some questions. You want to have your social security number for the account owner. And if there's going to be an ALR, you want that person's social security number. And if you're opening it for someone older than the age of 18, you're going to want that consent. That could be that limited power of attorney over the ABLE account. It could be power of attorney. Some people have guardianship of their adult children because their needs are more significant. They could right. upload a copy of that. So you want to have that ready. And then that last piece is that linked bank account. You know, think about that ahead of time. Does it make sense to link it to my check savings, my checking, have that routing number and the account number. And that way you'll have everything you need with you when you sit down to do it. That's awesome. Is there anything else we should know about the Maryland ABLE account that we didn't cover? Oh, golly, 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 golly. Um, yes, I do want to talk about folks that can take advantage of those maximum contributions. Some people say, oh gosh, I don't think I'm going to be able to put 16,000 a year in, but you may be surprised between stimulus payments that came in and extra leftover SSI you know, money, you may get to that 16,000 a year before you know it. What's going to happen when that account balance reaches $100,000? That's important to know. So remember money outside of an ABLE account in a regular checking your savings got a $2,000 limit. After an amount of time, you could become disenrolled because you have too much money. Within an ABLE account, you have up to 100,000. Um, you can exceed that $100,000 balance, but if you do, know that that person's SSI cash benefit will become suspended. 
Notice I said suspended because if you were to expend any of the money in the ABLE account and it were to fall below 100,000, Social Security can automatically reactivate that cash benefit because you were never disenrolled. But most importantly, and hear this, because this is the big difference, Medicaid will remain in place. Even if that monthly cash benefit is suspended for a while, your Medicaid, any Medicaid waivers, food, energy, housing assistance that that person has, they remain in place. Outside of an ABLE account, you lose your SSI, you lose your Medicaid, you lose your waivers. It's done. You got to reapply for everything. So there's the big difference with that. Interesting. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And can I just say one other thing I forgot because I, I did have to stop and get that hot pot off the stove when I was talking about investments. So for folks that do choose the investment options, which are mutual funds managed by Vanguard, there is an asset based fee for investments. And since there, you have different choices on which portfolios, you want to check that program disclosure book on that. So there's there's some, you know, some fees that go along with that because I want to make sure I tell you about all of it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So the, then the next two is, is, is that, um, once you go over that hundred thousand, um, and you don't do a spend down, then I know if I'm not mistaken, people talk about the pool, have a pool, pool trust yes. to put it into. So that that's another um, thing that I like to mention when we talk about that $16,000 a year. Okay. Let's say, um, you want to use this as your long-term savings and investing tool, planning for your child's future, right? Mm -hmm. Guys, as parents, we all have to look to the future. I hope that we're all around for decades to come, but we need to be thinking forward, right? Mm -hmm. When we're not here, what type of planning are we doing so that that child, that adult child has what they need moving forward? This is where you see a need for multiple tools. An ABLE account is a great way to get started. You have access to your funds easily. The person can access the funds. It's easy to set up. It's only $35 a year. But think about somebody passes away and you want to leave a part of your estate to your adult child with a disability. Can't leave it to them in a regular account that lose all their benefits. Mm -hmm. You can only put $16,000 a year in an ABLE account. So what in most people's estates are larger than 16,000, right? Their life insurance policies, whatever. You need to think about a special needs trust. And there's three different kinds. So you get, you, you can do a pool trust. You can do, um, you know, there's different types of trust. This is where you want to look at that for those uh, larger amounts, insurance settlements, um, estate, you know, inheritances, $50,000. It doesn't matter how much you put in a special needs trust. There's no limit, and you can fund a special needs trust. You can open one, but then not fund it until after you pass away and your estate goes into that trust. So right. lots of different, lots of different things to think about that. Um, a good tool for that is a, a website called specialneedsplanning.org, www special needs. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, specialneedsanswers.com. And it does a great job explaining the difference between the three different kinds of trust and an ABLE account, how they work together, which ones can do what. It's a super tool. And they have a little um, search tool on that website that you can search for attorneys in your area that specialize in estate planning for people with disabilities. I would like to give some personal advice, not for Marilyn ABLE, communications and outreach manager, but as a parent, I'd like to say to you, when you're doing a special needs trust or any estate planning for a child with a disability, you do not want to use an attorney who does divorces, car accidents, taxes, everything. You need someone, you really need someone who understands public benefits and all the nuances because you don't want to set I've heard I've I've had people spend a lot of money set up a trust found out it was the wrong kind of trust and their kids lost their benefits that's that's some personal advice yeah. <laughs> off the record <laughs> and we I actually put in a call to a friend of mine had um recommended um an attorney that she used who's um whose child also went to the same school as faith and I'm like, oh, I'm like, well, that would be great because, you know, she lived it, she knows it, you know, so, and it is really, again, talking to people who've used, you know, so that's another one that I, I definitely want to do a podcast on is, 
is explaining all of that because it's so overwhelming. And then, the, you know, and I've sat through some, some, you know, presentations and stuff, and I'm still like, I haven't had that aha moment yet of the ding. Like, I'm like, it, it's just, it is, it's very overwhelming. Um, so yeah, so we are actually getting into that whole process um, now. So it's something else I want to, um, to set up and do a podcast with. That would be helpful. I know I just finished the process, it took me over a year. It takes a long time to do it, but you feel better when it's done because you know you have a way to leave your estate to your child. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you first and foremost for just just for being willing to come on and uh and share your personal story and then also to go over the Marilyn Abel account because it is so important. Um and uh, I will go ahead and put notes in, in the show notes and also leave the link to, um, to one of the, um, PowerPoints, um, on Marilyn Abel as well. So thank you. And until next time. Thank you so much for having me, Karen. It was so much fun. Oh, wait. Oh, what? Yes. The word. Oh, my what? word. My favorite thing. I'm like, oh my gosh. So, uh, yes, it is. I, I gift a guest, um, every guest, a, a special meaningful word to them. And I hand stamp it on a token, put it on a bracelet or keychain. Um, and yeah, so this is, this is like the main part that I usually put out as my little teaser and then, you know, stay tuned for the, for the next episode and, and, and in full, the full interview. So what is your word? If you would be willing to share it and why you chose it. My word is abide. And I chose that because I heard this Dr. Seuss quote one time that said, you never know the value of a moment until it's gone. And I know I, I live so fast paced, we all do from one moment to the next. And I'm really working on trying to just dwell in that moment. You know, if it's a challenging moment, I still want to try to dwell in it and ask myself, what am I learning from this? This is painful, but how am I growing? But for those really good moments, the ones that, you know, we all have those moments that you're like, oh my gosh, what a moment. Write that on my heart. I want to write that moment on my heart so I can remember it and come back to it all the time. So I'm learning to abide. I love that. And, and it gives me the chills because it just brought up that memory, which I'll always remember now about your son saying how your daughter is beautiful. So that's definitely one that will live in the heart. Absolutely. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Till next time. Thank you for joining us as we spread awareness through our personal stories and the many resources shared. You can help us by joining our village simply by sharing our show to the masses. If you would like to support the Gilbo Girls on another level, click on the link in the show notes to make a donation in any amount. Add your address and you'll receive a hand stamp token with the word village on it in appreciation. Be sure to subscribe to our Gilbo Girls podcast and YouTube show. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Gilbo Girls. Till next time. <laughs>